Victoria has been a basket case for many years now. First, there was Dan Andrews. Now there is Jacinta Allen. Both seem to be completely out of their depth and incompetent and unable to effectively manage a budget, implementing spending plans that go well above Victoria's ability to afford them. Who can forget, for example, the debacle that was the Commonwealth Games, which Victoria first promised to be able to implement, but then pulled out of, much to the embarrassment of all Australians. This was a symptom of the bad planning of the Victorian ALP. They were attempting to get votes by promising an outcome that they could never afford to achieve. They promised to deliver the Commonwealth Games by having regional locations for various game centres. However, that was always going to be incredibly costly and it was simply not going to be effective or in any way possible to achieve in a cost-effective manner. But that's just one incident. The Victorian ALP has had cost overruns all over the place. And the latest catalyst is the Victorian Rail Loop project, whose cost has ballooned and is now threatening to create a credit rating downgrade, which in turn would raise the cost of borrowing money for the Victorian government and raise the interest expense, thereby worsening the debt and deficit situation, and thereby forcing the Victorian ALP to tax its citizens more and more and more, ever taxing people more in order to pay for their own mistakes. Now let's focus on the debt for the Victorian ALP at the moment. Such is their incompetence that debt has ballooned. The Victorian government's own budget forecasts indicate that net debt will grow from $156.2 billion on the 30th of June 2025, up to $187.8 billion on the 30th of June 2028. This is an average annual growth rate of 6.3% per year. And this is in their own forecasts. In the decade of 2023 to 2024, net debt has increased on average 22.9% each year. That is a phenomenal increase in debt. They're spending well above their means. The debt is increasing much faster than inflation, for example. It's increasing much faster than Victoria's ability to repay that debt. And it would only get worse, because if the Victorian government keeps spending the way it does, and keeps managing things in the same incompetent manner, its credit rating is going to be downgraded. And as I've indicated, if the credit rating is downgraded, then the interest rate on the debt is going to go up, which means the interest expense increases, which means the deficit gets worse, which means the amount of debt then has to increase in order to compensate. In essence, the Victorian government is digging itself into a death spiral and seems to have no intention of turning things about. They, in fact, appear to just have an intention of putting their head in the sand and allowing things to get worse, hoping they can tax their way out of their own debacle. Such is the incompetence of people like Jacinta Allen and Dan Andrews. Now the chickens here are coming home to roost. Ratings agencies have warned about this issue. They have warned that Victoria is about to face a credit rating downgrade. This should not be a surprise. The catalyst, of course, was Victoria's rail loop project. Reportedly the project was to cost about $34 billion. That is a huge amount of money. However, it is actually worse than that, because the cost has now blown out and is at least three times that number, and it's climbing. Allegedly, the project is actually even worse when you think about the planning of it. It allegedly was a gift to the now-disgraced CFMEU. The ALP, when it took office in 2014, cancelled the planned Eastern Distributor project. Now one can debate about the Eastern Distributor and its merits or whatever. However, they cancelled it, which was much cheaper, and then replaced it with the rail loop, which was much more expensive, still not delivered, and has had massive budget blowouts. Not only that, they listed the CFMEU as the preferred contractor reportedly. And for its part, the CFMEU would then go and support the ALP and aid its election. It appeared to be rather circular. The ALP would come into government, create a project that would benefit the CFMEU, and then the CFMEU would benefit the ALP, in a rather cosy, circular manner, which isn't really helping Victorians, but it's certainly helping people to retain power. Now this proposed rail project has become a farce, due to its enormous cost blowouts, and the cosy relationship between the ALP and the relevant union. Ratings agencies have now warned that this is a disaster. And unless the Commonwealth government comes in and provides assistance, then Victoria's budget will be so bad that their credit rating will need to be downgraded. Now, of course, if the Commonwealth government comes in and helps out Victoria here, 
It just means that everyone else is paying for Victoria's incompetence. Now, I'm sure the Commonwealth government and Anthony Albanese would pretend that they are giving money to Victoria, but it's really taxpayers. Whenever the government is giving money to someone else, it is coming from taxpayers. Anthony Albanese is never giving anyone his money. He's giving someone else's money to resolve this problem. Now, of course, the Commonwealth government is going to find itself under more and more pressure to save Victoria. This would resemble the worst type of bailout. A bailout where there are no consequences for the incompetence that led to the whole situation. There would appear to be no requirement to prevent it happening in the future. It would appear to give the Victorian ALP license to waste yet more money on yet more projects. And to be clear, they are wasting other people's money. When Jacinta Allen goes and burns money on something, she's not burning her own money. She's burning Victorian's money on these things. Hence why she can do almost whatever she wants, because she doesn't bear the consequences of it, and particularly when Victorians don't seem to be inclined to vote against the ALP, well, there are no electoral ramifications either. It appears one can go and do all of these incompetent measures without there being any actual consequences. Now, the problem, of course, like I've indicated, is the Victorian ALP shows no signs of losing office. Victorians, after all, voted for the party at the last election, despite Dan Andrews treating Victorians like mugs and with complete disrespect. Dan Andrews bulldozed over Victorians, and then they still re-elected his party. It is baffling. One would have thought it would be better to vote for a literal sack of crap than to vote for Dan Andrews and his party and his policies. But Victorians disagreed, and they brought his party back into power. Now, of course, the Victorian Liberal Party has not been exactly competent. They've been rather insipid. They haven't really done a great job creating an effective opposition. However, almost literally anything would have been better than Dan Andrews' party. But Victorians still voted for Jacinta Allen. Now, Victorians voted for these stupid policies, to my mind, must bear the cost. But I suspect that will not happen. Now, to be clear, not all Victorians voted for these stupid policies or for the ALP. But enough people did to bring the ALP into power. And I feel incredibly sorry for the Victorians that are now saddled with this incompetent government. However, I don't feel sorry for the people who voted for these clowns and now are stuck with the results of it. Now, should this credit rating be downgraded, Victorians' debt and deficit will worsen. Because in simple terms, the way this would work is when the government runs a deficit, well, that deficit needs to be financed somehow, and it's financed by borrowing. And if the deficit gets bigger and bigger, you need to engage in more and more borrowing. But when the credit rating is downgraded, interest costs go up because the interest rate on the debt goes up. And therefore, Victoria is going to have a greater deficit, and that is going to lead to more debt. But because the interest rate keeps increasing, Victoria's deficit is going to get worse. It's a bit of a death spiral, unless and until Victoria shows some signs of getting its spending under control. And I focus here on the spending because Victoria has already gone out and tried to increase taxes in all manner of ways, making itself less friendly to business and less friendly to investors. Those investors would then logically just not invest in Victoria and would invest in any number of other places where it might be a little bit more competent. And Victoria therefore would actually lose out on business activity because people have other places to go. It's not like in the bad old days where people were stuck in a particular state. People can now move between states. They can move money between the states. People can move their businesses offshore, in fact. Indeed, human capital and financial capital is now incredibly mobile. Governments can't steamroll over people and implement stupid policies and expect people to just sit down and take it because they have no option anymore. Now, of course, there's no immediate solution to this being resolved. Hopefully, at the federal level, there is a little bit of a solution, at least at the next election, we get a split house and a split senate, so that one party, in particular here the ALP, doesn't have effective control over both houses. However, that may or may not happen at the next election. It remains to be seen. Peter Dutton hasn't exactly been the most inspiring opposition leader, but at least he is mounting a degree of opposition, as we've seen with his comments about immigration. However, the ALP seems like it's still form government after the next election, and it's not at all clear that the ALP will lose control effectively of the Senate either. Or perhaps it will be a power-sharing arrangement between the ALP and the Greens, which might in fact be even worse. Now, to its credit, One Nation has been the stand-up performer in criticising these bad policies. But it's not clear this will necessarily result in electoral gains. Maybe in the Senate, 
but it appears unlikely they'll actually win a seat in the House, given how preferences tend to shake out in elections. And I'm pessimistic overall. I don't see the situation getting very much better, and I don't see politicians turning things around. In fact, I suspect that this will continue to get worse. I think the politicians will continue to rip off citizens while peddling myopic misinformation to try to get voters to re-elect them. And voters might do this, because voters don't have the time with all of their other responsibilities, their work responsibilities, struggling with cost of living, struggling with childcare and the like, to pay minute attention to the policy to disentangle why they are so bad. Rather, to some extent they rely on the media, which itself is not necessarily competent, and or rely on information from politicians who are often misleading people about those policies, thereby enabling the politicians to get re-elected. The only real solution is for people to effectively try to vote with their feet and, as far as possible, move away from these states that are incompetent or, when possible, it might lead to businesses and people moving overseas to perhaps more friendly environments if the politicians don't get their act together. We can only hope that they do. And we can only hope that organisations like these ratings agencies force politicians to actually start behaving in a somewhat halfway competent manner. But I suspect that they'll probably just steamroll over people anyway. Let me know your thoughts about it in the comments below. I would be interested to hear your thoughts about the whole situation as well.